Rob for the Retro Junkies, and you're listening to Two Dudes and an S. I kind of like these guys. Hey, Stalker. What's up, man? Actually, I think I'm, my name is Stryker, not Stalker. Oh, well, it looked like it looked like Stalker. I hate the fact that I answered to that. <laughs> That's not a good sign. Uh, no, I do not stalk people. Okay. Well, it looks like Stalker. You need to fix your. Okay. You need to fix your eight-bit spelling font. Right. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. All right. You want to talk about uh, bad dudes? In case. In- are we? Are we bad enough, dudes? Uh, I was hope I was hoping <laughs> you wouldn't use that. <laughs> Why were you hoping I wouldn't use that? Maybe because it's been used so much in the past week. Maybe I've just seen it so much, posting things on Facebook. I don't know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, let's talk about bad dudes. Okay, cool. You got any? Uh, you got any of that fancy schmancy history for us? And now it's time for Justin's historical tidbits and trivia. I do. This one's got some exciting history, right? You ready for this? I'm ready. Okay, so Sylvester Stallone, he had this idea for a movie Mm -hmm. where the President of the United States got kidnapped by ninjas, okay? And he he had some ideas for who he wanted to be his co-star. I think uh, Patrick Swayze and uh, Arnold were at the top of the list. And he wrote this movie, and he decided, okay, I'm gonna pitch it to the movie theater. So the movie, the movie companies said, uh, you know, we'll sign on for like two or three more Rockies, maybe a couple of Rambo's, but uh, we don't like this one. This one's they just they weren't ready for this. They yet. didn't, they, yeah, they didn't, they didn't think it was good. They just weren't, they weren't ready for this. And so he was like, so out of frustration, Sylvester Stallone went to uh, Japan. And went to the Data East company and decided, hey, you guys want to look, listen to this idea. It was, a, it was an idea for a movie, but nobody wants to produce it. So I'm going to give it to you guys for a video game. And Data East was like, sweet. We like this idea. It's a great idea for a game. We're going to make it. Mm-hmm. Now, the problem with this story is I was unable to find anything out there to prove that any of this is true. Okay, yeah, I was about to say this, this this isn't true. Uh but I feel like it's probably the case. I still yeah, feel like I mean I, I feel like I, yeah. I just, the only thing that may not be true maybe the Sylvester Stallone part, it may be uh you know it could be Arnold that started the whole Yeah. Thing. It you could you be, never know. Yeah. Yeah. Bruce Willis. I don't know. Somebody that was a bad dude that wanted to make a movie about this. But mm-hmm. This game could not be more 80s, really, if you think about it. That's what I love about it. It's quintessential 80s. Oh, yeah, and I love it about it, too. Also, I wanted to talk about, as far as history goes, uh, the title of our podcast. Uh It's Two Dudes in an Ass, and I guess we used the um, the symbol from this game in our... We did, yep. um, The logo. But I have to... As a disclaimer out there, when we were talking about what the name of this podcast we were talking about, I don't think this game ever come up. Or at least no, I didn't think no. about it. I didn't think about it. No, I, I found the logo after we named the yeah. show. Okay. Or, yeah. It was it was, it was was an after-the-fact thing. When I saw, I was like, man, what are we going to use for a logo? Mm-hmm. And I was, I was flipping through, like, NES box arts and right. NES pic- pictures of NES games. And I was like, ah, oh, bad dudes. And yeah. there's the... There's two dudes standing there flexing their muscles. Right. I said, that's just too perfect. Right. Because we love to flex our muscles. Well, I mean, yeah. And if you could see the video, I mean, we're yeah. both shirtless. Yeah, yeah of course. And the only way to be. Yeah. But we need to ban sleeves, too. No sleeves. It's summertime. Get rid of the sleeves. Right? Mm-hmm. Sleeveless shirts, right. tanks. You gotta wear them. All right. So even, even if you work at an office. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even if you have to wear a tie, just take your sleeves off. You can still wear your tie, just no sleeves, right? Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Anywho, let's talk about some actual history from this game. Okay. So, Bad Dudes was created by a game, it was a game company 
called Data East. Data East made this into an arcade game that was called Bad Dudes vs. Dragon Ninja. Um, and the game was followed by a 1991 spiritual successor, Two Crude Dudes, known in Japan as Crude Buster. I never even heard about that game. I didn't either. Yeah. But anyway, I guess it really wasn't a, you know, a sequel per se. Because it says it's just a spiritual successor, but anyway. So it was created by Data East as a um, uh, arcade game, and then it was ported to several home systems, including Apple II. Did you know that it was actually came out for the Apple II? I did not. Yeah, uh, Atari ST and Commodore 64, MSX, and PC DOS, just to name a few, in 1988. Um, and Imagine Software was involved in importing it to those systems. But in 1989, it came to the most important system, the NES Famicom. Um, it was, yay! yay! And it was developed by Sakata SAS and published in Japan by Namco uh, as Dragon Ninja. But in North America, it was released by Data East USA simply as Bad Dudes. I think I like Bad Dudes just better than bad dude yeah i did too yeah and in europe it was uh released in 1990 by ocean software as bad dudes versus strike Ninja. so it, they use the same name just uh some some little tidbits about the differences between the game the 8-bit versions uh lack the two-player co-op mode instead having an alternate two-player mode and the title screen of the japanese version became different while the english version was unchanged now, the Secret Service's quote at the intro screen of the, of the NES version was phrased slightly different, as the president has been kidnapped by ninjas, are you a bad enough dude to rescue the president? And um, so one other interesting thing about the North American version was the arcade was President Ronnie, is who you're saving. However... In the NES version, they North Nintendo of America wanted them to take that out because they didn't want because it was too close to President Ronald Reagan, I guess. Huh. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want any. What? What? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but at the, when it, but by the time the NES one finally mm -hmm. came out, Reagan wasn't president. Right, anymore, and that's really? that, that's what I was going to lead up to here. Um, so sorry. No, sorry. it's fine. The reason they wanted President Ronnie removed was Nintendo of America didn't want any political content in their games. So I guess they thought it would look favorable, like they were favoring President Reagan. But I think my theory is on that is that President Reagan was such a bad dude himself, he wouldn't allow himself to be kidnapped. Hmm. I mean, the guy was shot. Come on. And, and yeah, came that's back. true. So maybe that, I think that was more the reason. That's what I'm telling myself. Yeah, Dragon Ninjas can't catch right. Ronnie. Right. <laughs> but the president in the NES version actually bears a resemblance to George H.W. Bush, who was the president when the NES version was released. So maybe they didn't, they, they took out the name, but they still put a guy in there that looked like the current president. All right. The 8-bit home computer versions lack the intro from either the arcade or the NES version. And the I'm bad speech was only present present in the NES version. The one of the best parts yeah, of the game? Yeah, it is the best part of the game. Yeah. So the NES wins by far. In my opinion. In all categories. Okay. Well if we were comparing, then maybe yeah. we would get into that, but we're not. So Yeah. Uh Karnov, the titular character of another Data East arcade game made the cameo first appearance as the game's first boss. So the big fat guy that you got to beat in the first... Uh, he's from another game. And also, mm -hmm. Chelnov uh, can be seen... can be seen transported in a frozen container on a freight train in the arcade version of Brad du Bad Dudes vs. Dragon Ninja. And he was from another Data East game as well. So... This game was... Uh, it's you know accepted pretty pretty great as far as reception. Uh, you know it, it, it well its reviews are kind of average I guess you could say. 
But one thing is President Ronnie, as he appears in the arcade version, was ranked in EGM's list of top 10 video game politicians. <laughs> so, nice. there you go. And pop culture. Uh, in the movie Parenthood, in which the son of Steve Martin's character wonders why the game is so difficult, Martin, grasping for an answer, says, because they're bad dudes. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. And the logo can be seen at the end of Stage 4 in Sly Spy, which is another Data East arcade game. I think Data East likes a lot of crossovers. And... Yeah. In the 1990 film RoboCop 2, one of my favorite movies, by the way. I love RoboCop 2. That's pretty good. Officer Duffy gets pushed by RoboCop in- into a dra- Bad Dudes vs. Dragon Ninja arcade cabinet. But wow. with Sly Spy built into it. Do you think uh, you think Data East had to pay for all these spots? Are they really know. trying to get bad dude's name out there or something? I don't know. You know, there was a there was as far as like the history of movies. If you if you watch older movies or older television shows, you know how they use like generic names. If somebody's drinking a Coke, they uh-huh. they just drink cola. But then if you notice yeah. later on in like the nineties and you know the two thousands, um, you, they start drinking the actual Cokes and Pepsi. And you know, brand names start showing up, and there was a there was kind of the at first companies didn't really want their names put in movies, but then they started to realize, well, we can allow them to use it. It's basically free advertising for us. So I don't know. Maybe that was part of this. Maybe they're like, you know, free advertisement. Put us in your movie. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I don't know. So, that's just about it. As far as names, uh, the designer of the game, Makoto Kikuchi, and the composers, Azusa Hara and Hiriako, Hiriaki Yoshida. Alright. So that's all I got. Sounds, sounds like some pretty difficult names to say. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, you know how I am. About any of them. I do. It doesn't really be that particularly difficult. But, uh, yeah, so it's a pretty interesting history following the bad dude, mainly between the, it was a game that had a lot of crossover to a lot of different systems, and uh, was actually quoted or, or used in a lot of different pop culture uh, uh, movies and such. So, did you have this game? Did you find it? And now it's time for Michael's quest to find the cart. I did. This is actually one of my favorite games when I was a kid. So I've had this game for a long time. I don't know. I think if I remember, let me think of the story. I think my dad, and you know my dad, so this is a little weird. But when we first got my Nintendo, my dad was really into it. Right. Later on in life, he absolutely despised video games and hated it every time I played it. But at, <laughs> at first, he loved the Nintendo. Uh-huh. And this was a game that he brought home and he wanted to play. Yeah. Me and him. Yeah. I don't. I guess he just... You know, he's he liked 80s action movies. This mm-hmm. kind of spoke to him. And uh, so he brought it home. We, we, start, we started playing it. He, of course, he wasn't very good. He's... He, did, he just wasn't very good at video games. He got him frustrated. He never played it again. Of course, I continued to play it for a lot, right. long time, the rest of my life. And this was, I don't know. When I was a kid, this was just one of my favorite right. games. I, I hadn't played it in a while until this past week. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so I've had it for a long time. It's another one of those boring, had it forever stories. Yeah. I pulled it out of my basement garage place back when I pulled the NES out and it still works so I'm happy that's all that matters right. hey, it's a good game great game yeah yeah okay well that's all I had to say about finding the game I guess we can just go ahead and talk about the game gee I wonder what these guys have to say about the game uh, 
All right, let's talk about this game because I got a lot to talk about this game. So, um, one thing. Wait, wait I got a manual. Oh, let's read the manual. What are we doing? Do the manual. Sorry. Yeah. What are, what are we doing? Okay. Uh, I got a feeling this <laughs> manual is going to be great. Well, don't, don't build it up too much. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Data East brings you arcade realism at home. The president kidnapped? <laughs> but the really bad news is that the Dragon Ninja is responsible, and you alone can rescue the president from his clutches. The Dragon Ninja has a helicopter waiting to spirit the president away. If if he makes his getaway before you can stop him, the world will never see the president again. The Dragon Ninja will be ready for you. You can expect to face, at the very least, wave after wave of ninja henchmen, samurai, and super warriors as you make your way through city and forest atop moving big rigs and freight trains. Remember, the nation is counting on you. Where is... As much as I love this game, I got some critiques. Mm -hmm. Where is the Secret Service? Where's the Army? Where's the National Guard? Where's the Navy? It's just like a couple guys probably working out at a gym somewhere in Washington, D.C. Just got to, mm -hmm. you know. All right, let's go. Let's go say the well, they're, they're not guys. Well, they're dudes. They're dudes. Okay. Sorry. They're, sorry. So they're dudes. A couple they're dudes. dudes working dudes. out in a, in a gym. Undoubtedly, are uh, or eating a breakfast of steak and eggs, are or well, eating steaks and drinking. Probably, eggs, probably. yeah, that's true. In the eighties, that was a very popular thing because of Rocky, the three gigs. Right. But so eating steaks, drinking eggs, and they're like, oh, well, the president's been cap captured, uh, and they're looking for some bad dudes. We gotta go. Get up! Let's get on it. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's not like let's go get the Navy SEALs, yeah. or, <laughs> or, you know, like the the Marine Special Forces or anything. No, we need a couple bad dudes. Maybe, maybe the the the, the way I see it is, I didn't want to. I don't think they wanted to draw attention to the fact that the president's kidnapped. Yeah, that's true. You know, I think they wanted to keep it under wraps. And if all of a sudden you got a, you know, you got the Special Forces flying out of the country, mm -hmm. something's up, mm -hmm. right? But the news media is not watching these two guys. I'm oh, sorry, two dudes. Yeah. No, they don't. They don't care what these two dudes are doing, even if they're beating up thirty ninjas uh -huh. in the streets. Right. Right. They don't matter. Yeah. That's true. I mean, I, you know, the thing about it is, maybe this game uncovered a government secret. Maybe the Navy SEALs. Okay, they. they yeah, they got Bin Laden, and they're. They're they're too they're totally bad a no no doubt not taking anything away from the Navy SEALs but maybe mm -hmm. our really really secret top forces please don't get the Navy SEALs no, after no, no, us no, no. please don't no no I'm not taking anything away from them but I'm just saying maybe a really top secret government force is just a couple of bad dudes that we only mm -hmm. use in times of crisis when like the president's been kidnapped. Now, luckily, right, in the, right. for, former, former Navy, Navy SEALs, SEALs just they they t they pick the two <laughs> baddest dudes in the Navy in the Navy SEALs, and they said, "Okay, we're going to take these guys, we're going to put them in a in cage, and all they're going to do is work out. They're just going to work out constantly. And when the president, if the president ever gets kidnapped, we're going to use it. But luckily, in the United States, the president has never been kidnapped that we know of." It could just be that the bad dudes keep recovering every time it gets to them. Hmm. That's what I'm saying. Right. It's a secret. We never know this happens. Maybe this is actually based on a true story. Yeah. Could be. Because the game was came out in 1988 and they used President Ronnie. Maybe Ronnie was kidnapped. Yeah, it's based on a true story mm -hmm. for real. Mm -hmm. Although that blows a hole in yeah. what we said earlier about Ronald Reagan not being able to get that. Yeah, that's true. Maybe it was actually the president before Reagan. Oh yeah, Carter. But by the time they got the game Carter, out, they just Carter. Yeah. You could just probably hold his hand and get him out of there. Just say, <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, a, a ninja comes up and he's like, hey, 
yeah, I'll go wherever <laughs> yeah. you want. Where yeah. are we going? Yeah. Exactly. We're going to Japan? <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. All right. We're not, we're not, we're trying not to be political, but let's be honest. If, if, if you're going to pin up, uh, Carter versus Reagan in a cage match, it's not even going to be a contest. Yeah. I, it doesn't matter, Republican, Democrat, whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. If they were both Democrats or both Republicans. Right. I'm pretty sure that if you just put Reagan and Carter in a, in a steel steel yeah. cage death match, then I'm pretty sure yeah. we know who will win. Pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's talk about some actual gameplay in this game. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good idea. Okay. Well, I got to say the manual was not... They could have done better. There's some more stuff in it, but it's it's... Not a whole lot, so it's it's kind of it's kind of a cheap. It yeah. looks kind of cheap. So, what did you think about the feel of the gameplay? Did you feel like it was fluid? Uh, I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of hit or miss. Yeah. The actual gameplay. I mean, it's it's fun, and the stages are varied. Mm-hmm. And I found I didn't find myself wanting to quit or right. get bored. But at the same time, it's frustrating because there's... I don't know if it's the hit detection is a little yeah. off. Or it's just... It's difficult, but it's not too difficult. It, it's hard to put my finger on exactly what it is, but it's... It's obviously a B-grade game and not a top-tier Yeah, game. at times I kind of felt like it was choppy. Like... Yeah, when part of it is... I don't know if this is just my game or if this is a common occurrence, but... The screen would flicker a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know if they were just trying to cram way too many sprites on the screen at one time, but there would be a lot of flickering, which would cause it to be kind of yeah. stuttery for me. My my explanation to that and what I think is going on, now, I'm no, uh, I'm no expert on sprites and video games, graphics and things like of that nature, but I will say I think what it was for me... It looks like when they were transferring it from the arcade to the NES, it just didn't fit as well. And that's why you have those kind of flashing scenes and the kicks sometimes seem kind of choppy. Yeah. Things seem a little off. That, I think, that's my explanation, I think. Is it just, you know, it was hard to. Like you said, there were too many sprites. It worked well for the arcade, but it just didn't transfer into the NES as well. Have you ever played the arcade version? Right. Uh, actually, I think I have a long yeah. time ago. Like when I was, you know, six or seven years old or something. Yeah. I think I do remember playing the arcade version. It was pretty. I remember being pretty. <laughs> I remember having to spend a lot of quarters if I want to keep playing it. Okay. Um, that's basically, I mean, the crux of this game, if you're going to play it today, is it is an 80s, it is an 80s action movie mm-hmm. through and through. If you want, if you want to, if instead of watching, say, I don't know what, Roadhouse yeah. or something, or Big Trouble in Little China, or something like that. Instead of watching a movie like that, if you want to play a game, I'm going to get you, game. sucker. Wait, is that a? I mm-hmm. think that's a seven. <laughs> oh, what is that from? Uh, no, no. What is that? There, there's a movie called "I'm Going to Get You, Sucker." Oh, yeah. I hadn't seen that. Uh, one. It's either eighties or seven. I look it up. Warrior. Okay, well, maybe late seventies. You could call this a late 70s movie too but it's Warriors was a 70s sure. movie but it felt a lot like 80s too yeah so yeah um anyway yeah I mean yeah. but yeah the yeah. I'm gonna get you sucker came out in 1988 so yeah it's definitely 80s it's tough to be a black hero is the title line to it. Mm-hmm. is yeah. it a black guy yeah that's great. That's great. <laughs> okay. Keenan Ivory Wayans was the star and the writer and the director. And everything. It's hmm. pretty funny. It's a funny movie. It's good. All right. Okay. Anyway. Um. Yeah. So the 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 graphics are pretty good too. I mean they they've got uh, 
I don't know, the sprites are really big. The, if you if you ignore the screen flicker that I I suspect is happening right. in all games, then the graphics are pretty good. You got you got a different stage. You got tons of different stages. Like stage one is uh, the right. streets. You're walking along a fence. Or I guess I guess it's yeah. I guess it's like a uh, it's like a depot for you know transfer dudes trucks. transfer truck. Do you ever know the, dudes? Yeah, there's dudes on it. Yeah, that's the name of the uh, transfer truck company. Dudes, dudes transfer dudes trucking. Yeah, dudes <laughs> trucking. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um. I guess I actually that's what they do on the side. They're tr- that's they're truckers. You know. Okay. They're truckers. Even better because you remember the quintessential 80s movie oh, Over the Top? Did you ever see that movie? It's I Sylvester know. Stallone and he's basically he's a truck driver. And I don't remember the the actual plot but it's something to do with his son. He has to raise money to get his son or something. And he so he enters a arm wrestling tournament. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. So over the top, definitely. He's a truck driver. Mm-hmm. They're just pulling so right. so much stuff was, from '80s stuff. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, hang on though. I, that brings up a point to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. That movie, Over the Top, and just truckers in general, yeah. I guess. It would be really, really difficult to stay buff yeah. as a trucker. It would. Unless, so I don't see. I don't believe that they're truckers actually. Unless they don't ever actually drive yeah. trucks. Maybe they just own the Maybe. company. But if Sylvester, that that kind of blows a hole in the theory of the movie, though. Know? Because if he owns the company, why does he need money? And why is he having the arm wrestle to get it? Well, no, I'm not talking about Sylvester Stallone. I'm saying that movie's inaccurate. I'm saying oh, it's game. Okay. The dudes own the trucking oh, okay. company. That way they can work out right. all the time. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that way they can also hitch a ride. Yeah. In the yeah. Like in stage two, when you ride on the back of a very slow moving transfer mm-hmm. truck. Yeah. At first, you think it's going really fast, but then you notice that the ninjas run up <laughs> to the truck and jump jump on. Well, they are ninjas, let's be honest. And if you fall off the truck, you can mm-hmm. jump back on. So, yeah. I figure it's going about ten miles an Maybe. hour. It's the only car on the road, too. Right. So. I like stage two. Though. I love stage two. The music from stage two is amazing. We haven't started talking about the music yeah. yet, but stage stage two's music is awesome. They really, I think, they did a good job on the the stages here but I, I probably with the stages at, at times is it's like so the the premise of the game is you've got the, the ninjas the dragon ninjas got president he's trying to take him to a helicopter where is this helicopter because it seems like you're going through a lot of stuff to get to this helicopter it's like you're yeah. going this is you end up in a forest this at some is point it's like yeah like, yeah yeah, yeah. A cave <laughs> so on the back of a train in the desert. Yeah, where is this helicopter? It seems like Dragon Ninja maybe didn't think this through. He's like, you've got a long ways to go for the helicopter. Well, maybe he did think it through because he knew that the dudes would have to go across mm-hmm, the country that's true. on on foot, apparently, <laughs> and and truck and train. <laughs> yeah, you know they they could have renamed this game like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles or mm-hmm. something. But Bad Dudes is much better. Yeah. Um, no, but I don't know. They, they fall into the same pit that all beat 'em up games fall into. Mm-hmm. I mean, you want to make the stages like crazy mm-hmm. different, but at the same time, if if you do that, then it looks right. ridiculous. D- Double Dragon kind of did the same thing, you know. Right. You go. Remember, you like travel through the city streets, through a construction site, and then into the yeah, forest. Yeah, I remember that. Then down into a cave and stuff. So, I don't know. I think they all kind of right. do this. But if you didn't do that, the game would be boring. Like, would, do, do you want to just go through the streets over and over again? Street 1, Street 2, That's Street true. 3. So, I, I don't fault them for that. No. But I like I liked the stages. I think the stages are good. I didn't really like the cave stage. No, but I think we both agree that yeah. the truck stage is probably the best. 
The truck's good. The train's good. The forest is okay. And the, I don't know what it is, a factory? The one yeah. at the end? The big, the big green factory? <laughs> yeah. So, the last, apparently, I guess the, the, uh, the helicopters at a factory. Yeah, factory yeah. downtown, I think. I guess the dragon, that's the dragon ninja's front to get into America, maybe. Because he owns this factory. Hmm, yeah, could be. Actually, I can probably tell you. I think it was in the manual. Let me find out okay. what that is. That was actually... It was a factory. Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> so... Yeah. It says... By the time you reach the factory, some of the super warriors you've defeated earlier will have had a chance to return to the factory to reinforce it. Your first objective when you reach the factory is the elevator, which will take you to the second floor. The elevator is guarded by one of the super warriors, and you'll have to defeat him before you use it. When you reach the second floor, you make your way to the Dragon Ninja's helicopter. Wait, the helicopter's on the second floor? That doesn't make any sense. Is it only two floors? Is the second floor uh. the roof? Yeah, there's. I guess this factory is just a two-floor factory, and really the second floor is just the roof. Right. So it's a. It's. Well, okay. Then it's like most every Swamp factory room. then, because you just have one one giant room and then a roof. Okay. But most most of the time you don't have an elevator that takes you to the roof. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, yeah. So. Uh, it says uh, that he'll no doubt try to take off with the president aboard as soon as he senses you're near. So he's waiting for you to come yeah. before seems, he takes off. Seems daring. Yeah. He's a brass, he's a brass fellow, that mm-hmm. dragon ninja. He wants to rub it in your face. He wants you to watch him fly away. Hey, bad dudes. Yeah. You can't catch me. Nana nana boo doo. <laughs> but actually, well, actually, what you do is you jump on the plane, you jump on the helicopter with him, and fight him on the on the rudder. Which right. is cool. It's cool. That, now that's very 80s too, fighting on the rudder of the helicopter. Right. Yeah. All right. But anyways, yeah, that's, uh, I, I just want to reiterate though that the music in this game is awesome. It sounds like 80s metal, epic 80s metal. Right. It's just, it's They awesome. certainly dis- didn't disappoint in the, Continuing the '80s theme with the music, um, um, it, it, it's just so good. <laughs> I really like this game. It's just, you know. But it's, the, I don't know. It's not. It's the thing is, it's not a good game. If somebody were to release <laughs> this game nowadays and made it like, I don't know, made the same game mm-hmm. sort of people, and then charged us, charged us full price for it or something, charged us sixty yeah. bucks. Everybody yeah, would be did. mad. They'd be like, "This is a terrible right. game." Right. But going back and playing it now, I don't know. I don't know if it's nostalgia. I don't know. I don't know what it is. But I just love this yeah. game. It's just so '80s, and the fact that it was—I think maybe it's the fact that it was on '80s hardware. You know, it was on the Nintendo, right. and it was on arcades. Maybe that's what makes sense about it and makes it okay. Yeah, and, and you gotta think about, I guess, the time to, you know, coming out in the eighties. Maybe we were, maybe we were just stupid back then. I don't know, or maybe we weren't. But what I'm saying is, I still like it now. I can still play right. it. But I'm thinking that if it were to can't come out now, I wouldn't like it, and I wouldn't play it. Maybe. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense, but I recommend it to anybody, especially anybody who's played it before and wants to go back and get it. I would yeah, recommend it. Yeah, definitely. And anybody who's a fan 80s. of just ridiculous 80s-ness action right. movies, then I would recommend getting this game too. It can't be expensive. I haven't looked up how much it was because I didn't have to buy it this time, but it can't be an expensive game. I highly no. doubt it. Uh, I'm going to look it up. But while I'm looking that up, let's talk about the okay. different ninjas. Which I thought was pretty, pretty okay. interesting. Like the blue ninja almost seems like an idiot. Let's be honest. Is that yeah, the regular the ninja? First the first one is you start to show up. I think the manual actually has point values for the different ninjas. 
Uh, yeah, I think I had that pulled up, actually. Um, let's see. Yeah, the Blue Ninja is only 100 points. And they don't really do anything, and you can, you can pretty much kill them with one hit. But apparently you don't kill them. Because yeah. they come back. Hmm. Well, no, those are not the ones that come back at the factory. It's the super warriors that come back at the factory. Like uh, Wolverine and stuff. I, I got some pretty good trophies about the super warriors, or the super ninjas. So okay. I don't want to spoil yeah. too much. but. Yeah. Alright. Well, anything else you want to talk about this game as far as gameplay? Uh, were you going to tell me how much it's going to cost? Oh, yeah. five ninety nine. Ship. So eBay, you could buy and that. There's a few on here, and they range from pretty much like eight bucks. In that there, hey, there is a uh, there is a dwarf ninja. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a midget. That's that's kind of racist. <laughs> uh, not racist, but uh, what do you what do you even call? I don't that? know. It's just rude. It's just rude to call them dwarfs. I think. I thought I thought they preferred dwarfs. Oh okay. No, I think they they like little people. Yeah. It's a little yeah, it should just be Little Ninja. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Though so this again, this was yeah. the '80s, so. And there's dogs. You can't forget the dogs. Oh, I hate, I, yeah. I hated the dogs. The dogs are only worth 200 points, but I really think they should have been worth more. And you know, the thing about this game is you've also got to watch time and life too at the same time. Right. Yeah, you can yeah. run out of time, and it actually mm-hmm. happens. It kind of reminds me of a uh, little bit of Kabuki Quantum Fighter. They yeah. Time that actually ran out. You can. So there's uh, Bad Dudes Arcade Game on eBay, and it's at a hundred dollars right now. Three days left. Of course, by the time you hear this, you'll probably win. probably going to be like going down now. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway. Wait. So you can buy the. Uh... You can buy the actual arcade cabinet yeah, for Yeah, well, that's the starting bit. Oh. Huh. Yeah. Well, okay, let's, uh, how about, uh, how about some right, trophies? I'm... Retrofitted trophies. Sorry to hear your trophies, but they're super works. Do you have trophies? I have one. I have four. Oh, my. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I'll I'll start. Or do you want to just go ahead and get yours get yours done? Or what do you want? Mine, to... I, I'm, mine's not that uh, great. Uh, so let's go ahead and do yours. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is where's my moon pie? And that's getting all the colas in the in a lot. Uh huh. RC cola and a moon pie. Yeah, I'm gonna go with RC cola. That's interesting. The colas pretty much are now considered bad for you and now Mm -hmm. and back then they're like that's how you get light that's how bad dudes get light yeah I mean they're bad for you but I think it's because back then people drank like one 12 ounce can a day or something now everybody's pounding away (laughs) 44 ounce big gulps of cola like it's nothing Mm -hmm. yeah so everything's fine in moderation I feel like even cigarettes goes kids Go smoke cigarettes all day long. No, no, no. We don't need that. I'm just, I'm just kidding. The dudes do not condone cigarette smoking. Yeah. That really is bad, even in moderation, I think. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. Um, yeah, that's a good one. I like that. All right. Let's hear yours. Okay. My first one is Adamantium Rage. Mm. And that is Get Stuck Trying to Beat stage two super warrior adamantium rage huh? okay. yeah can you can you catch that mm-hmm. and um i don't know he looks like wolverine oh, and wolverine oh. Is, his claws they're made of adamantium uh stumped you on mm-hmm. one yeah okay i'm embarrassed all right the next the next one is robocop question mark and that is beat the stage three boss. Ah, yeah. Who, who's like a big robot. Yeah. Okay. And, Maybe that's uh, why RoboCop have... 2 used this game. Yeah. 
That's true. Could be. Yeah. All right, and then I have Attack of the Bionic Commando. Ooh. A throw to another NES game, and that is Beat Stage Five, which has a guy with a looks like a, a Bionic Commando grappling hook thing. Mm-hmm. And that's a throw to another NES game, by the way, if anybody's been living under a rock for the past <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see. And then my last one uh, has nothing to do with the Super Warrior boss, but it's called Hobotastic. And that is Hitch a Ride on a Truck and a Train. Okay. Because I feel like don't don't hobos hitch rides. Oh lot. yeah, more on yeah, trains so. than trucks. I I would assume. Uh, well, if they could get in a truck, they'd probably get in a truck. Right. Yeah. So hitch a ride on a truck and a train. It's called Hobo Tastic. I like it. I do like it. And then I was going to come up with one for a burger, but uh, I just I, I'm afraid that we've. Uh... Okay, I will. Burger time, and that's beat the game. <laughs> yeah, we didn't even talk about that at the end of the game. But here again, I've talked about this before. It's these ridiculous, like is, we, we talked about Ninja Turtles. You get uh-huh. pizza from April. Seems like the right. president should give you something. Just awesome, you know? Well, he's, he's going to buy you a burger. It better be one good burger. <laughs> I yeah, don't know. It is. I'm looking at... Well, but he's also going to go out to eat with you. I mean, you get to go out to eat with the president. That's cool, right? I guess. <laughs> it just seems like a lot of work. And, uh, you know, I've talked about it before. Like, Super Mario 64, you go through all this. And dang princess is going to bake you a cake. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, there's... I Again, though, I say, what do you want? What do you want? From him? Do you want him to make you like the vice president or something? Maybe. Maybe I'm just guilty. Maybe I. Uh... I think you're a little selfish. Yeah. I think you just want too much from these people. Maybe it's because I don't believe in altruism. I don't believe there's no in alt- altruistic. There always has to be. You've all. You're always looking out for yourself. Yeah. And uh, you know. They are bad dudes, but I think we should make note at this point. I mean, we've talked about this the entire time. They're not bad as in bad. They're bad as in good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Really good. Yeah, really good. Oh, well, you know, bad as in bad. Michael Jackson, bad. Not to, bad. Yeah, like bad to the bone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Some George Thorogood, yeah. 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 Which could have been awesome trophies if I would have put more thought into it. Yeah, I you know Michael Jackson, I'm bad. Don't want to mess with him. Although I feel like if you were gonna mess with anybody, Michael Jackson would probably be an easy target. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway. Yeah, I don't know. He can do. He he does a mean dance knife fight. Yeah, that's true. I have to say though that that outfit that he's wearing not very intimidating. No. It's, it's yeah, not intimidating it like the bad dudes wear. Sleeveless no, shirts. And right. white sweatpants. I'm thinking it's white sweatpants. I think it's like a karate gi. Could right? be. That's Wrong. what I'm thinking. More like it. And then the top is a is a black wife beater. Mm-hmm. But see, I think it's white sweatpants because sweatpants were very popular. Right? Wearing sweats. Yeah, I, su- I suppose they were. Yeah. In public? Probably not in public. I think that's I think it's a new <laughs> thing actually. People do that now. Yeah. Used to you wouldn't go to like Walmart. Walmart's probably not a good example. People just go there. I mean I think people would go to Walmart naked if they could. They do. But I think they do. Yeah. But you know, people wouldn't go out just like sweats. Like my dad, for example, will not go out he will not go out of the house in sweatpants. Or gym shorts. But like our generation, it's like who cares? I don't know. Move on. Don't Pajama don't pants. throw me into this lump because I don't go out. And, I don't go out in sweatpants. Well, I don't always, either. At least I don't either. I mean, I take a shower and get all cleaned up, but I'll at least throw on some blue jeans or something before I head out the door. Yeah. So you'll stink. Yeah. I mean, people will know I'm dirty. Trust me. 
<laughs> but I won't be wearing it. I won't be wearing it. Right. Yeah. You know, we didn't even talk about this in the gameplay, and I just want to throw this in there. The cheat codes mm -hmm. for this game. 63 extra lives. Seems like an odd number. It, it does. Hey, wait. It D actually is an odd number. Yeah, okay. Nah. All the mathematicians out there will get that. Or first grade math. <laughs> All the little children yeah. in first grade math will love that joke. <laughs> yeah. um, so to get that, B A down up down up simultaneously on the second controller, mm -hmm. and then press start on the controller number one. And then more powerful, defeat normal enemies in one hit. Is another is another uh, cheat code. I've never used it. Uh, okay. I don't. I don't use cheat codes. Right? I don't. I don't really use cheat codes either. I, I was when I was watching some other people play in like gameplay videos. I saw somebody like flickering and punching, and every time they punched, they exploded people. I didn't know. If, I didn't know if that was a power up that I just never found, or if that was a cheat code. Probably is a cheat code. The only cheat code, you mean, unless I'm playing Contra, then you gotta use a cheat code, right? Unless you're Nick unless Stevens. You're, unless you're Nick the, Stevens. Of the NES yeah. podcast. Right. Right. Dropping. Nice little shout out. Yeah. You're welcome, Nick. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's, yeah. uh, how about a rating? Okay. Man, I'm not sure how I feel about this game. I wonder what the two dudes think. How are we going to rate this game? Well, we've already done 80s characters. Yeah. Um, How about just like a '80s slash '90s action movie? All right. Um, let's go with. Let's see. Hmm. That's a that's a tough one because there's so many to choose from. I'm gonna go with Rocky Four, mm, and Rocky the reason Ford. I'm going. I'm going with Rocky IV is, at the time, it seemed so cool, like all this technology they're using on, on Drago, yeah. the Russian, but now it like looks really cheesy, and the, the whole movie really is kind of cheesy now, but I yeah. still like it because I'm nostalgic for it. Uh -huh. I, that's the same with this game. Like It was probably really cool back then, but now it's kind of like what you were alluding to earlier. It's kind of cheesy now. Mm -hmm. But I still am nostalgic for it. Uh -huh, yeah. I still like it. That's good. So that's, that's my. That's good. Vladimir Putin would be impressed. No, wait, no, he would rejoice. Yeah, Putin rejoices. Putin rejoices. All right. Well, I think I'm gonna go with the one that sticks out in my head is Cliffhanger. Ooh, yeah. Because there's that awesome helicopter fight. <laughs> yeah. And this game has an awesome helicopter fight at the end of it. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm gonna go with Cliffhanger. Which yeah, I haven't seen in forever. I may have to watch that today. I was just thinking, just before you said that, I was just thinking like, I'd like to sit down and watch a bunch of just good '80s movies. Yeah, this game kind of makes me want to do that. Memorial Day weekend, they had the Rockies on uh -huh. pretty much like nonstop. I think it was on AMC. No, Spike. Sorry, it was on Spike. Uh, shameless shout out to Spike. You can sponsor us if you'd like, Spike. <laughs> yep. If you're listening, um, I'm, I'm, sure it, they, I'm sure they do. Yeah, um, but they had all the Rockies on, and I think I watched over the weekend probably all of them at some point. And uh, but I, I would like to sit down and watch some good '80s movies: Last Action Hero, RoboCop, uh, we'll Predator. Let's say, we'll say '80s slash early '90s because they did continue on through like '95. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So yeah, I want to do that too. How about yeah. some uh, some feedback? Let's do it. All right. We have some Facebook feedback. Uh, but first, we have more iTunes feedback that I didn't know existed. I'm sorry right. to these people for waiting like a month to read your feedback. But apparently iTunes doesn't just let you see other countries' feedback easily. And I just happened to be browsing in Canada's iTunes store for some reason. 
and some other country. I'm sorry, I forgot which country you're in. The other, the other person, um, mm -hmm. but apparently you can. They give us they give us ratings, but they don't appear in our normal rating system. They appear in that country's rating system. So we have a couple more ratings. The first one is from Allison Benson. Allison says, while it may not be the most professional produced podcast out there, Two Dudes in a Ness is an informative and entertaining good time. Growing up in the late 80s and early 90s, the inter Nintendo Entertainment System and all its exciting titles were a huge part of my childhood. Listening to this podcast brings me back to a simpler time when all I cared about was finding the location of the next warp zone or in what dungeon the next piece of Triforce might be. If you too were a fan of the NES, this is a podcast for you. Keep up the great show, dudes. P.S. Please review my favorite, The Legend of Zelda soon. Mm -hmm. So thank you, like Allison. It. That was good. That was good. And then yeah. uh, we have another one from Uber Sheep. I think it's Uber Sheep. Uber Sheep says, love the David Crane interview recently. A real eye-opener. He's clearly a seasoned professional reminiscing and sharing history of a very hard-working career. I look forward to the retrofitted trophy section. It's something we're actually adding to RetroAchievements.org. Looking forward to more RF trophies and more NES classics. How about Paperboy? So I guess the Uber Sheep is one of the people who works on the RetroAchievements.org website, which is a really cool... Mm -hmm. which is really cool what they're doing. They're actually adding achievements to old games. The only caveat to that is you have to play on the emulators that they supply. And I'm mm -hmm. not a huge fan of emulators, so I don't get on there very much, but it is cool what they're doing. If they could ever if they could ever partner up with like Retron or somebody like that right. and, get, and get these retro achievements put into like a system where you can actually put carts in it, mm -hmm. oh, I'd be all over that. I think that'd be cool. And maybe one day down the road they can. So, so that's, that's uh, my thought. That's my two cents on that. Let's move on to Facebook. Okay. Do you want me to? Do you have Facebook? Up, yeah. You do have it pulled up. All right. You go ahead. Uh, okay. Aaron Hickman put up a fun story about bad dudes. So this is from Aaron Hickman. It all started when I was about five or six years old. In my hometown of Corpus Christi, Texas, Bad Dudes is one of my favorite games to play with my older siblings. We always managed to save President Ronnie from Ninja and ate our share of celebratory burgers. One fateful day, however, an older kid came up to our bedroom window while my brother, while my brothers were in the living room and asked if he could look at our collection of NES games. Well, I obliged him, and surprise, he ran off with about 20 games. <laughs> Ten years... That's not funny, sorry. Yeah. Ten years later... Ten years later, I went back to my hometown to visit my dad and found our exact copy of Bad Dudes at the local pawn shop and bought it. How could I tell? It had a distinct black mark from a magic marker. I still don't know what happened to the other 19 games, though. Was that distinct black mark the name Aaron? <laughs> it could have been A-H. That would have been yeah. really funny if, if the distinct yeah. black mark, he's like, and that distinct black mark was Aaron Hickman. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Kyle Murphy said, I just bought this over the weekend for a couple bucks. Still haven't dug into it. Hopefully, since then, Kyle, you have played this. Yeah, I'm sure he has. And Rob McCollum maybe was trying to drop a hint here. Cryptic post of the day. I wish I could share some really cool news with you about this game. What is he trying to say there? I don't know. He never did share it. Maybe he was wanting us to ask him on the show? Okay. Rob, what is it? Call. Call us on the, the Retro Junkies line. Yeah, yeah, the Retro, Retro Junkies line. Which is something that I should probably shout out more, but I forgot what it is. Yeah. I'll look that up as you finish the feedback, or is that all of it? No, there, there's more. I'm pretty sure that if President Obama were kidnapped by ninjas, the mission briefing wouldn't just be, are you a bad enough dude to rescue the president? That's from Daniel Walker. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure it would be. Yeah. Philip Vaughn said this game got me to watch awesome video games. 
a completely stupid and funny show on YouTube. And he also said, you've been bad, dudes, for making us wait. <laughs> what, making us wait on this, on this game? I guess so. And Justin Schoenrock said, I'll always remember this game from the movie Parenthood. Great scene in the arcade with Steve Martin and son. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, there was another thing that I wanted to say. There's a few more on the event page. Have you have you got that pulled up? Uh, no. Give I've got just... I, I've got it pulled up. Let me let me do it. Okay, Jeff Yupel Yupel says to be honest, I thought this would be the last game you ever reviewed. Just seemed yeah. fitting. Way to let me down. Dang, that's a good idea. Yeah. We're like an hour in. You want to just bag it up? <laughs> yeah, we're just, we're not gonna. Re- we'll save this release for. Yeah, we'll save this release for last. No, that is a really good idea. Thanks, Jeff, for letting us know after the fact. Mm-hmm. Jeez. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, Cody Root says, I've never played this one before, but it looks like it should have been called Rad Dudes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's true. It could have been called Rad Dudes. Eric Purcell. Eric Purcell. Uh-huh. says, well, I've heard the bad dudes were racing in the cars in Rad Racer, so maybe they're rad dudes after all. There you go. So wait, Rad Racer is actually how they got between the stages, perhaps? Maybe. If you you got to play these games side by side and switch back and forth. Right. Yeah. Okay, uh, and then Jay Jorgensen says, there should be a sequel called Rad Dudes Bad Racer. I don't think I played this one either. <laughs> Sweet. All right. All right. You know, I mentioned on Facebook that we have uh, two people who are getting dangerously close to honorary dudeship already. Mm-hmm. Should I reveal who those people are? We actually have th- like three or four that are getting close, but two people are really close. Let's just no. Let's keep it. Let's keep it under wraps. Uh, okay, sorry, people. Sorry. You could probably uh, guess if you listen to every show and listen to like the feedback section. You could probably guess which people are yeah. getting kind of close because they're also big proponents of our of our Facebook page and our Twitter and everything. They help. They share and they and they comment. And that's how you become a dude, an honorary dude. So, all right, we're keeping it under wraps. Sorry, people. Yeah. Uh, that number, by the way, is uh, is seven seven five seven retro one. The Retro Junkies hotline is seven seven five seven retro one. And don't call collect. It wouldn't work. I don't think it nobody's would. gonna answer. Nobody's gonna answer. Yeah, it goes straight to voicemail. So you're just right. you're just leaving us a voicemail basically. Actually, and then if, if you don't like alphanumerics, uh, 775-773-8761. So you call there, leave a voicemail, and if we can figure out how to do it, we'll put it in the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really don't know how to do it. We don't have a mixing board or anything, so that would be the way to do it, I, I guess. That's how other people do it. But The dudes are mixing boardless right now. So we're not like the rest of those retro junkies who use the hotline all fancy like. Mm-hmm. But all right, I guess that's a good shit. Well, I, I wanted in a, in a parting shot. Mm-hmm. I wanted to talk about something you put on Facebook the the Kickstarter campaign, the oh, failed yeah, yeah. Kickstarter campaign. Mm-hmm. So there was a Kickstarter campaign in 2012, I believe it was. Yeah. To try to do a sequel to this game, and it failed. Uh, I don't know what a game, a bad, a bad dudes two game would be like in today's time. I don't think it would be as well accepted, and I think it's one of those things they just need to leave well enough alone. Yeah. What do you think? I think so. I think. I mean, the only people who would play it and enjoy it would be people who love this game and grew up with it. And I'm not exactly sure how many people that would be. Right. 
And I don't like the I failure don't of the Kickstarter. I don't like the direction that the Kickstarter was going in. Like one of them looks like an old homeless guy, and the other one apparently <laughs> ate ate way too many burgers with uh, President Ronnie. Yeah, it could be that they were just the same dudes, and they were retired and older. Well, yeah, I know that's that's what I'm saying. They were the same dudes, but I would like to think that these bad dudes would have stayed in shape over the yeah. years. You know what I mean? Sure, it's true. Yeah. Although the fat one does get his leg pretty high, which is impressive. <laughs> Tom Arnold would be impressed at how high that guy's leg goes. Yeah, as Tom big Arnold. as he is. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for bad dudes. Yep. Uh, you can find us on a lot of places. Justin, do you want to share some of them? I've actually put us on basically every single social media site. Yeah. We're on everything. I mean, if you, I don't even know. I mean, some of these I don't even know what they are. Do you, <laughs> do you know what about.me is? No, I don't. Never I don't heard either. of it. We're on there. Uh, yeah. Do you remember MySpace? MySpace, yeah. Still it still, still exists, think, and we're on. I think there. Justin Timberlake like owns most. Of them. Like. Oh wow! Maybe he'll list, start listening to the show. Maybe. Because hey. we're the only people on I on MySpace now. Us and Justin Timberlake. <laughs> 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 yeah, but yeah, so we're there. We're on Spreaker now, which is like a, which is, I don't know what it is. It's like another place you can go listen to podcasts. It's kind of like Stitcher. Mm-hmm. Um, we're on Vine. I posted two like six second videos up to Vine about bad mm-hmm. dudes. So we're on there. I don't know. But of course, we're on Facebook and Twitter and Google Plus. Yeah. All, all that jazz. We're on iTunes. Of course, you probably already know that we're on iTunes or Stitcher or Spreaker. Or SoundCloud. If you're listening, you probably know we're on these places because yeah, how else are you going to sure. listen? That's true. Oh, we're on TuneIn. TuneIn. Tune in. All right. Sweet. And also, can't forget nesdudes.com. Mm, yeah, we are on nesdudes.com. Because if Justin could remember to save his post instead of <laughs> instantly publishing them, sorry, <laughs> hey, to, sorry to anyone I, who accidentally got the wrong thing last last week i did that one time <laughs> thank you very much once yeah um, but, yeah that's yeah, true you did it once. how many times only once yeah that's true and although it's allowed a mistake i think it uh i think it really screwed up the app i don't really know what happened of course we have a <laughs> we have an android app too by the way but, yeah but last week's episode i don't think it works i don't think you can listen to last week's episode because of how we posted to our website so. yeah but if you can, good. Actually, I'm blaming that on you. Uh-huh. Why is that? Uh-huh. Well, you said you couldn't get it uploaded to WordPress. Remember there's some technical well, issues? We'll, t- we'll talk about that after the show. Okay. It's not necessarily a technical issue, more of a don't want to spend more money on WordPress issue. Uh, okay. Okay. All right. Never right. mind. Anyways, let's, let's end this show before uh, we reveal too much of our hand. About how we do, how we <laughs> okay. operate, or don't operate. Right. Okay. All right. Thanks everybody for listening, and continue to like us and share us with a friend. Mm-hmm. Please do. Here comes the noises for next week's game.